Hello, I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, I will give you an introduction overview on how to build a real time chat application using Django channels and WebSockets. Let me show you first a quick demo of the project. So, here we can see the chat application we're going to build. I'm logged in with the admin user, and we can see here that only one user is online at the moment. Let's add now a message. Anybody here? As you can see, the chat bubble appeared here on the right. But obviously no one is receiving this message right now, so let's add two more people to this conversation. Okay, so we have here now Bobby and Lucy on two different additional browsers to check this out. Let's Bobby join now this conversation. And as we can see, the online number changed as soon as Bobby joined. And if Lucy joins, we have three users online. Then Lucy says, hello guys. And we can see this message is now broadcasted to the other two chat windows as well. So Bobby sees the message and replies, hello Lucy. And we can see everyone gets this message simultaneously. And the admin writes, awesome. Now the admin leaves this chat group. And as we can see, the number changed here to two online. Then Bobby says bye bye. And also leaves. And now only Lucy is left in this chat. Alright, this is the application we're going to build in this tutorial series. You can also check out a live version of this project on my website at awesomepix.com slash chat. Alright, this technology of real-time communication is also widely used in computer games and other applications which require instant feedback from the server. This topic might sound very complicated and under the hood it might be indeed quite complex. However, with Django Channels and HDMX this is actually quite easy and straightforward to set up. So even if a beginner, this tutorial series should be very easy to follow. However, should you not be too familiar with the basics of Django, I recommend checking out my backend tutorial series first to get understanding of the core concepts. Alright, let me quickly tell you now the main steps we cover in this series. So first we're going to build a basic Django chat application. A second step we add HTMX for interactivity. Then we switch to an ASCII server to upgrade to a WebSocket connection. This allows for a consistent and asynchronous connection between the browser and the server. Then we upgrade to channel layers this allows simultaneous communication with many users. And as last, we see how we can set up a Redis database for production. Before I explain those concepts more in detail, a quick shout out to my newest supporters on Patreon. A high five to Constantine and a fist bump to Family Travelog. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I'm a stay-at-home dad of two little cute buggers and every little help, so thank you so much. Alright, and now let's get into it. So what is a WebSocket? It is a communication protocol that provides consistent connection between a client and a server. And it was introduced as a technology for the web in 2011. Let's see how this works now in more detail. Django by default is using the HTTP protocol to communicate between the browser, also called the client, and the server. Django uses a whiskey server for this, which stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. And the communication is synchronous, meaning each request is handled one after the other. When the browser sends a request to the backend server, it receives a response back which renders the web page in the browser. This is called a request response cycle and the connection is closed when the response is received. 
In a WebSocket connection, we have an asynchronous communication between the browser and the server. This means requests can be handled independently from each other and are designed to handle multiple requests simultaneously. This is for example the case when many users interact in a chat application at the same time. To enable this, we need to use an asynchronous gateway interface, known as an ASCII server. An ASCII server can be described as a more modern version of a WSCII server that can handle both synchronous and asynchronous operations. To establish this WebSocket connection, the browser sends first a standard HTTP request to the server, asking for an upgrade. Then the server initiates a WebSocket handshake with the client. This process typically involves an exchange of security keys with hashing. Once both sides agree on the terms, a connection is established which remains open so both browser and server can send messages at any time without waiting for a response from the other side. The ASCII server does not come automatically with Django, so we need to install one. For our setup we are using Daphne, which is a server developed as part of the Django Channels project. However, there exist also other alternatives, such as UVCorn or HyperCorn, which offer similar functionality. Now let's take a look how our project will work under the hood. First, when the browser requests our chat page, it initiates a standard HTTP request to the server to fetch the page. Once this chat page is loaded, the HTMX code we implemented on the web page will trigger another HTTP request to the server, this time requesting an upgrade to a WebSocket connection. After receiving this upgrade request, the server initiates a WebSocket handshake with the client. Then after the successful completion of the handshake, the connection is officially upgraded to a WebSocket connection enabling asynchronous communication between the browser and the server using a Django channel. A Django channel is unique for each individual user and represents a one-to-one -one connection between the server and the browser. However, in order to be able to receive and broadcast a message to many users, we have to upgrade again and add a channel layer. This channel layer can add each individual channel to a group, where messages which are sent to this group can be accessed in real time. Additionally, to facilitate this communication, we need an in-memory data store, which manages the communication between all the different parts. For development, we can use the in-built data store Django Channels provides. In production, however, we need a more robust solution, which can be provided by the Redis database a very popular open source key value database with in-memory data store and caching, making sending and receiving data very fast. This database does not replace our Postgres database, but works alongside it and they complement each other. All right, that's the infrastructure of our real-time chat app in a nutshell. As last, let's get familiar with the main actions we can perform in each stage. In the HTTP request stage, we are working with the URL stopy file to call functions in our view stopy file and then return a response using the return statement. In the WebSocket stage, we are working with the routing stopy file to call a method in a consumer stopy file. So this file is the equivalent to the view stopy file to handle the business logic. And then we return the data back to the browser with the send function. In the channel layer stage, we are dealing with asynchronous communication and we will be using a async to sync function to bridge the gap between asynchronous and synchronous code. And finally, to broadcast messages to all members of a group, we are using the group send function. All right, I hope this explanation provided some insight and overview on how this works, but things will get more clear when we're working with the actual code. But this is all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you got an idea now what Django channels and WebSockets are. In the next video we will build out the basic chat application and also adding HTMX. I hope to see you there. Until then, stay curious my friends and ciao ciao for now.